What is going on, everybody? What is going on? The Catch Fan. My name is John Dawson, and in today's video, we will be breaking down five must-start wide receivers for week three of the 2023 fantasy football season. If you guys are new to the channel, this is all we do here all year round, free fantasy football content, redraft, dynasty, and best ball. So if you're into that, be sure to subscribe on the way in. But more importantly, please give in the comment section down below anything that you guys need, starts, sits, trades, waivers, roster reviews, whatever it may be, any questions pertaining to the 2023 fantasy football season, let me know down below. I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. But let's not waste any more time. Let's hop into today's video. All right, so week one, we had Mike Williams on the must-start wide receiver list. Last week, we had Keenan Allen on the must-start players list. And here we are in week three, once again, talking about the Chargers wide receiver core. I'm going to go with Keenan Allen in week three. A great matchup the first two weeks of the season against Miami and Tennessee. And in here in week three, we get another phenomenal matchup against the Minnesota Vikings secondary. This defense is atrocious. They just got lit up by the Eagles. They got lit up by the Buccaneers in week one. And Keenan Allen, nine or more targets in the first two games of the season. Justin Herbert is still looking his way. 100% of the time, it feels like 31.1 fantasy points in week two against the Tennessee Titans, 10 targets, eight receptions, 111 receiving yards, 13.8 yards per catch, and two touchdowns. And listen, guys, this is going to be a competitive game. Both of these teams playing under the expectations for the seasons. Both of these teams in need of a win. I expect a lot of offense. The Chargers defense, not good. I expect a lot of back and forth between these two teams. Keenan Allen, must start player no matter what moving in to week three all right next on the list we're going with puka nakua listen for these videos we usually go over players that like or maybe you know in the flex spot on your bench that you're not 100 confident in potentially we're not really talking about tyree kill or devonta smith in these videos and the first two players might seem obvious but guys there are enough of us out there still a little bit hesitant about puka Going into week two, because the San Francisco 49ers, I mean, they have a great front seven, and their secondary played well against the Steelers in week one, but maybe it turns out that the Steelers are just a bad offense because Matthew Stafford and company played really well against the Niners in week two, all things considered. But getting back to Puka, he's a must-start moving forward. I mean, he's probably going to be a must-start flex option, even when Cooper Cup comes back in to the mix. 15 targets in week one, 20 targets in week two. Cup could be back anytime between weeks four and six, or who knows? Maybe it's going to take longer than that. If you're a Puka owner, you're probably hoping so. Nonetheless, Cooper Cup not expected back until after at least week four. So Rams will face the Bengals in week three, a team definitely in need of a win. And the volume here is ridiculous, guys. We've seen enough. If you own Puka, you fire him up. 15 receptions off of those 20 targets in week two, 147 receiving yards, 9.8 yards per catch, 30.1 PPR fantasy points. Puka is a smash play week in and week out, and I still believe you don't need to sell him high. I really believe when Cup comes back, Puka is still going to be a great PPR flex option. No more discussion. He's in your lineups as we approach week three. All right, next on the list, I'm going with DJ Moore against the Kansas City Chiefs. Okay, look, this Bears unit, really disappointing to say the least throughout the first two weeks of the season. I had a lot of faith in this offense going into the year. But told you guys going into week two, you know, I wasn't going to give up on the Bears after that abysmal performance in week one. And it's not like the performance against the Buccaneers was that good overall in week two, but at least we got more fantasy value out of it. And at least DJ Moore was involved. Seven targets, six receptions, 104 receiving yards, 17.3 yards per catch, and 16.4 PPR fantasy points. So this is a tough matchup going into Arrowhead. This Chiefs defense, I mean, we kind of know what the Chiefs defense is, right? Like They're never really that consistent, but they do play well, and I do think they play a little bit better at home. But I still expect, you know, the Bears playing from behind, trying to throw the football as much in a competitive game script with the Chiefs probably coming out firing on all cylinders. I mean, they look back to true form, even though that game against the Jags was a little slow. So I expect another seven or eight targets for DJ Moore, and I expect him to make the most out of 
those targets. So I say it all the time, guys, bad offenses still produce good fantasy players, especially in full PPR format. So I think the volume will be there for DJ Moore. I think like last week, he will make the most out of that volume. And I think he is a solid flex option moving into week three. All right, next on the list, I'm going with Zay Flowers, who, if I'm not mistaken, has been in the video the last two weeks. I'm a big fan of Zay Flowers, arguably my favorite rookie wide receiver coming into the season, and he performed well once again in week two against the Cincinnati Bengals. 10.8 fantasy points, five targets, four receptions, 62 receiving yards, 15.5 yards per catch. Now he gets the softest matchup that he's had all season against a really bad Colts secondary. I mean, CJ Stroud, I, I'm not discrediting him, but he's still a rookie quarterback. He still has kind of, you know, a misfit bunch of wide receivers who are stepping up to the plate. We like Nico Collins. We like Tank Dell. Robert Woods has looked okay. Nonetheless, CJ Stroud and the Texans threw all over this Colts defense. The Jaguars and Trevor Lawrence threw all over this Colts defense in week one. It's not going to change. Baltimore is going to have a field day at home against the Colts. Odo Beckham is banged up at the moment. We don't know if he's going to play. That is good for Zay Flowers. You could argue less defensive pressure with Odell on the field is good. Sure, but against a soft matchup like this, Zay Flowers should see enough volume. I think he gets more targets than he had in week two, maybe closer to that 10 target range that he saw in week one. He's a smash play once again. He is moving into no questions asked, must start territory in the flex going forward into the season. Love Zay Flowers. Moving into week three. All right, I'm finishing today's video with another rookie wide receiver. Guys, if you own Jordan Addison, who's currently the wide receiver 10 in fantasy football, similar to Zay Flowers, he's moving into that must start flex territory with no questions asked. And this is a beautiful matchup against the Chargers. We talked about Keenan Allen at the beginning of the video. We talked about how bad both these defenses are. We talked about how competitive the game script should be. I mean, obviously, you're starting guys like Justin Jefferson and TJ Hawkinson and not thinking about it. But don't question Jordan Addison. At least five targets through his first two games as a rookie. A touchdown in both games. At least 60 receiving yards. 16 or more fantasy points in full PPR through the first two weeks in each game. He is a change of pace guy. Kirk Cousins is slinging it to him. The Vikings are playing from behind. Their defense is hot garbage but they are sticking in these games as Kevin O'Connell offense wants to throw the football. Kirk Cousins knows what he has next to Justin Jefferson in Jordan Addison. The secondary is awful. You shouldn't even be thinking twice about it. Jordan Addison is a smash play as we approach week three. And that'll do it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy the content today or find it helpful in any way, be sure to subscribe on the way out for more fantasy football content all year round in your algorithm, redraft, dynasty, and best ball. That is all we do here. But guys, more importantly, please get in the comment section down below anything you guys need pertaining to the 2023 fantasy football season. Please let me know. Start, sits, waivers, trades, injuries, roster reviews, roster confidence, whatever it is, please let me know down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And with that, I will say thank you guys so much for watching and or listening. And remember, you saw it here on the catch.